648, welcome back. Police in North Texas say they're bracing for an influx of armed biker gangs possibly headed their way after Sunday's deadly brawl in Waco, Texas. A restaurant parking lot where nine people were killed and 18 hurt remains blocked off this morning. Investigators still processing that crime scene and police from several agencies are finally moving motorcycles around to an impound lot to do it. About 170 people have been charged in the wake of that shootout. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. 11 minutes before 7 o'clock and we're starting our non-stop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And parents might have to pull out some of the winter gear they already put into storage <laughs> to make sure their kids are warm enough for that trip to school on this very cold May morning. Yeah, if you were caught off guard yesterday or your kids were at the bus stop, well, don't get caught off again this morning. You've probably noticed that I know I have in my neighborhood. The kids have been wearing the sandals and T-shirts and shorts to and from school for the past several weeks. But that really is not going to fly with another morning of sub-freezing temperatures. Of course, it's not always the kids who want to be bundling up. Parents say that after our taste of summer, it can be a battle to get them to put the winter gear back on. It's a huge tug of war. I mean, I have the coats out, you know, by the door, and just trying to get them to put those coats on is, it's... It's very hard. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it, say, I think. It's like, mom, it's you know like, what it's oh, like. yeah, even a six-year-old, it's a struggle to get her to put her coat on. But, of course, doctors say it's important to keep the kids warm, and, of course, then, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about the getting sick after the fact because it definitely you know takes a lot out of their defenses when they're summer vacations right around the corner they don't, don't want to be sick for the first sick. week of summer Good vacation point. explain it that way mom and dad maybe it'll work as for what it is really going to be like temperature wise at the bus stop this morning and as we go throughout the day, time to get a look at weather on the ones, and we start with meteorologist Nick Kerr. You know, I've got confidence in the kids, though. I believe in the kids. I believe they're going to walk out the front door without their coat and then come back in and say, Mom, I need my coat. I mean, because you will. A very frosty beginning. Everybody is less than 32 here in the Valley this morning. 27, 28, yeah, a lot of 30s. Uh, Fargo Moorhead at 31, so we're... Again, kind of dodging the frost bullet, coldest temperatures out in western and central North Dakota. By noon, 45 to 50. This afternoon, about 55, maybe some 56s or 57s. Oh, big improvement over yesterday, mainly because of mostly sunny on the way. This afternoon, it will be mostly sunny, less cold. I'm not saying 52, 56 is warm. It's just less cold. And with abundant sunshine, 100% sunshine, should be a lovely day. Even in the wood ticks of west central in the lakes area of Minnesota, not windy, less cold, 100% sunshine, and 50s, a big improvement over yesterday. And a north-northwest wind, about 9 to 10 miles an hour. So, again, not too bad. Uh, wind turning around, beginning to veer around to the west by the uh, morning tomorrow. Yeah, 51 Langdon, 56 Grafton, Grand Forks, Mayville, about 54, Devil's Lake, about 51. Pretty nice day, not bad. Look at the clouds just pushing south, clearing out, and in their wake, some very cold air out there this morning. And look at the big snow that fell oh, between 2 and 5 o'clock this morning in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And look at the big storms down there in eastern Colorado. Uh, severe thunderstorms down in New Mexico. And that's working its way northward to bring us some rain for the weekend. But for the next four days or so, looking real good. Temperatures at 31 Fargo, 27 Grand Forks, 28 in Devil's Lake, uh, Detroit Lakes, and Fergus at 34. Again, Grand Forks, a light northwest wind at 3 and 27 in Fargo-Moorhead at 31. Let's get a traffic update now. Here's Al Ahmed. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, everyone. I'm on uh, 30 or uh, Interstate 29. I'm uh, northbound now. I drove down to 52nd Avenue to take a look at things down there. 52nd Avenue was busy. I-29, very, very busy this morning. We're at the heavy traffic stage of things. Traffic moved along 60 to 65 miles an hour. We have a stalled car southbound I-29 right uh, north on the north side of the tri-level. Make sure you're looking out for that. Sitting in kind of a bad spot. We also have a stalled car on 19th Avenue north just east of Interstate 29. Interstate 94 driving pretty darn thick this morning as well, particularly westbound. Travel speeds on 94 around that 60, 65 mile an hour range as well. Drive carefully today, Al Ahmed Valley today traffic. 
6.53 now. We also have an update to a traffic delay on I-94 west of the Fargo-Moorhead area that we've been following this morning. Part of the eastbound lane of I-94 near Tower City was blocked off when a semi crashed and tipped over. It happened around 3 a.m. Now, no injuries were reported, but it did take a little time to get everything cleaned up. However, the update, that stretch is now back open for traffic. Minnesota lawmakers wrapped up the 2015 legislative session at midnight, and reactions are mixed as to how things went this year. DFL Representative Ben Lean of Moorhead is disappointed with the lack of bipartisan compromise. He says the GOP's biggest priority was tax cuts for Twin Cities businesses. GOP leaders also issued a statement early this morning. They say it was Democrat dysfunction that led to the disappointing session. They say Senate Democrats and Governor Mark Dayton held transportation funding and tax cuts hostage to their demand for a higher gas tax. Now, even with all the bills passed, the work might not be over just yet. Lawmakers did approve a $17 billion education bill, but it does not include funding for pre-kindergarten. Governor Dayton has threatened to veto that bill. If he does it, will force the legislature into a special session. A search warrant has been issued in the case of a 35-year-old North Dakota teacher accused of having sex with a student. Amanda Koloski of Mandan is out of jail after posting bail. Police say a 17-year-old boy told his school counselor he had sex with Koloski at her home about a week ago. Investigators say he and Koloski texted each other for more than a year. They also say that she admitted to the sexual relationship. She is now on indefinite administrative leave. Police are looking for a man suspected of assaulting two women in the same Grand Forks neighborhood. Both of the attacks happened in the early morning hours. One was next to the entrance of the Memorial Park Cemetery, the other just three blocks away. The suspect is described as 5'8", a white man with light-colored shaggy hair and a raspy voice. Contact Grand Forks Police if you have any information on the attacks. A North Dakota college student is pointing the finger at an apartment rental company, which she says trashed thousands of dollars worth of her belongings. Yeah, she was in the process of moving out of a Goldmark apartment in Grand Forks, but when she came back for a second load, she found her stuff in the dumpster and the apartment caretaker's brother's car parked in her garage where her things had been. Now, the CEO of Goldmark told us that if an employee is responsible, that person will be fired. He also said if the person who, is, who did it is not affiliated with Goldmark, he will pay for an attorney to help her out. It was a busy Monday for the UND Athletics Department that all started with a shocking announcement yesterday morning. After 11 years behind the bench for UND, men's hockey head coach Dave Haxtall left the team to take a job in the NHL. Haxtall leaves North Dakota with 11 straight NCAA tournament appearances, seven Frozen Four appearances, and 289 total wins. He's the first coach to jump from the college level to an NHL head coaching position since Herb Brooks back in 1987. Now, just under two hours after news broke of Haxtall's resignation, UND announced his replacement, pr promoting assistant coach Brad Berry to be the 16th head coach in program history. Barry is a former UND letter winner. He's been an assistant there for nine years. He also spent time coaching and playing in the pros. This month is National Hamburger Month. But no matter when you stand in front of the grill to cook up a delicious burger, it's important to be safe. The Valley Today's Christy Larson is live from the Moorhead Fire Department with a competitive taste test where they're grilling up some burgers but also learning a lot about safety. Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. That's right. You know, it's been a tough job for my photographer Norman and I as we've had to taste test a burger from each of the guys here. But let's again go over that grill safety before we announce our favorite burger this morning. So, Ryan, what would you tell people out there? You'd stay, stay close to the, to the grill while, while you're using it. Yeah, stay close. Don't let it be unattended, I think, is a big one we've been talking about. And what about you, Ryan? Just remember that you're working with an open flame. So anything that you don't want to get burned, make sure you keep it well away. And then we also do have Dan down here at the end. And Dan, what would you tell people out there when they're grilling this summer? Just to make sure they keep their grill clean. And clean it before the season and clean it after. Now, I know you guys have had quite a bit of uh, talking this morning, and it was kind of a hard debate. Again, we had three delicious burgers. You can go back, watch those videos, see exactly what they put on them. But we did have one winner. We actually agreed on something, Norm and I did, and we decided that this morning, Moorhead Fire Department had the winning burger. It was very juicy, very good. And again, tell people what you put in it. 
Well, it was the, it was the, the, the smokiness. Uh, we added bacon to it and the, and the smoked uh, Gouda cheese. And then the thing that wasn't on camera is uh, we topped it off with an egg because it is a morning, a morning burger, and we had to add that. <laughs> add the fried egg. Everything was delicious, though. I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys this morning for coming out and helping us learn about safety, giving us some great things. I think if we added the candied bacon on that and maybe put a few jalapenos, it'd be a perfect burger between the three stations. Well, it's home grill advantage. Yes. I guess at least that's <laughs> what West Fargo advantage. and Fargo are going to say. But uh, pretty good morning for Christy. They all sound really awesome, yeah. too. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you, Christy. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, according to a recent survey, men are more likely to do this for a job than women, but women are more likely to do it for love. The answer, move. If you want to take part in our question of the morning, just head to our Valley News Live Facebook page and join the conversation. All right. Quick check of the uh, forecast here. It looks like this. Uh, starting under a clear sky, frost to scrape on the windshield by noon about 50. Not very windy. I'm not saying it's going to be warm. Less cold. Nice day about 58. <laughs> I'll take less cold. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather for you right here in 25 minutes. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We will see you tomorrow morning.